Hello, Mount Pleasant High School Iowa families. My name is Nicole Cook. I'm a counselor here at Mount Pleasant High School, and I'm here today to talk to you about scheduling for next year, as well as give you some information if you have a current eighth grader at the middle school that will be moving up here to the high school for next year. I want to introduce and let you know who some of the other counselors are that we have here at Mount Pleasant High School, and let you know who has what part of the alphabet as far as how we break down which students are in our caseload. So first we have Mrs. Wilson. She has A through G. Mr. Lazaroff has H through O. I'm Miss Cook, like I said, and I have P through Z. There's Miss Deb Milkey. She's our student support counselor. Miss Amanda Boyle, our project aware counselor. And Camille Greening, who is our Mount Pleasant Area Technical Center career counselor. So those are your counselors here at Mount Pleasant High School. Um, I wanted to start out and kind of go through each subject area, core subject area for you and let you know what the options are for freshmen moving over from the middle school. Before I get started with that though, I wanna let you know that we're just really uh, aware that there's been a lot of challenges this year for everybody and uh, that we normally would be having this information given to you in our performing arts center here at the high school in a group meeting, but of course we can't do that right now. So this is substituting the information you would have gotten at that meeting. Uh, and so I'm going to go through, I'm going to tell you about all the core subject uh, areas and what classes your students will have the option to take, talk about credits, I'm going to talk about uh, Michigan Merit Curriculum, and then a little bit about how your student is choosing their classes for next year and some of the deadlines that are going to be attached to that. So mathematics, as you can see, this is quite the chart um, that breaks down where your students at right now and where they most likely should go for next year for math. I'm not gonna go into detail with this slide. I did wanna show it to you just so you could look at kind of the progression of math here at the high school. The main thing I want you to do though is take the recommendation of your math teacher because that is what we find helps the students to be most successful. So whatever your recommendation of your current um, student's eighth grade math teacher is, that is what we recommend that you do for next year. Another way to help you figure out what's the best fit for your student, this kind of goes through where they're, what class they're taking right now, what grades they're getting, and then what we recommend that they take for next year. English, there's two options for students for English for ninth grade, either English 9 A and B or Honors English 9 A and B. And you're gonna hear this theme as I go along through the next core subject areas. Anytime a student uh, is choosing between either a regular course and an honors course, we recommend that uh, you take the recommendation of their current teacher in that core subject area. So again, if your student is considering taking honors English, we recommend that that be um, recommended from their current English teacher. Science, next year you're going to have two options for science as a ninth grader, biology A and B or eco-science. The difference between the two is bi bio A and B is only two trimesters. Eco-science is three trimesters. It is considered an honors level course. And so it is um, more difficult and it does take place over the course of the whole year. So your student would have equal science all three trimesters. And again, we stress that you have a recommendation from your science teacher to take equal science. It does also fulfill the earth science requirement, which is another reason why a lot of students will take earth science as a ninth grader. Social studies. Uh, so your two options for social studies next year, world history A and B, honors world history A and B. There are also quite a few elective courses that uh, students can choose from in the social studies department. So uh, some of those are listed there. A lot of them are one trimester courses. Three choices that your student has for next year for world languages are French, German, and Spanish. Some of your students may have already started that as eighth graders. And so then as they come in as a ninth grader, they would most likely be taking the second year of one of those languages. Um, a lot of kids will start their language as a freshman. They don't have to. Uh, and we'll get into more of what those requirements are as we move into when I talk more about um, the Michigan Merit Curriculum and the requirements there. Fine Arts, we have lots of offerings in the art department, um, also offer choir, uh, band, and orchestra. So make sure your student looks through those options if there's a student that's interested in, in those options. Health and PE, uh, you'll see there's quite a few elective courses for PE and health. <clears throat> you do need to have uh, take an intro to PE to take the other electives um, in, P in the physical education department. You have to have had health to do some of the other um, choices there. 
and PE and health are core requirements. And a lot of times your students will take those as ninth graders. Graphic Isabella Technical Education Center. Here's a breakdown of all of the options that your student has in our tech center. Uh, there are several amazing classes that your students can take. Mostly as a freshman, they would be taking an intro course in these because they're going to be taking a lot of core classes. So being able to fit in tech classes usually doesn't come until um, definitely after freshman year, sometimes June, up till junior and senior year. Uh, so, but there are introductory options available for Mount Pleasant students uh, as well. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about the scheduling process um, and the program that we use for scheduling here at Mount Pleasant High School. So some of your students are in computer class right now. In fact, I, my student is in computer class right now. So they may have already entered a lot of their course requests into the Zello program. And I just want to make sure all of you know that just because that has already happened doesn't mean changes can't be made. We will be making changes to course requests for several months leading up until the beginning of the school year. I'm giving you this information here so that you can get into your student's account if you'd like to see what classes that they requested for next year. Normally, we would be going into computer labs and helping students do this. I know your students will be going back next week. And so if your student is currently in computers, I believe they're going to be getting some face-to-face -face instruction on inputting this. And then the, what will happen is they will switch to PE. Those of you who have a student who's in PE right now will come into computers and we'll start getting into the Zello program and working on putting in their course requests. The other thing I wanted to mention was the students going to be working on a four-year plan called their educational development plan. So when they go into Zello, they're going to have, they're going to see four years in there, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. They're going to input classes into, into Zello for all four years. I want everybody to know that changes can be made after they input that information. The main one that you want to make sure is accurate is their ninth grade year. That, what will happen with that information that is in the Zello program is once everything has been input, we will push some buttons and it will pull that information into our power school system. At that point, power school will then tabulate everything and put it into an actual schedule for your student. Their sophomore, junior, and senior year will be updated every single year. So it's more of a way to get them to be thinking about what their career ideas are, what kind of classes they might want to take at the high school. But the, those other three years are not getting put into a schedule. They're not set in stone. We will be altering those for the next four years. The main one you want to worry about being accurate is your student's ninth grade year. The other thing I wanted to say was, if you get into the Zello program to view your student's information to see what they've put in, if you are in there and you're not feeling comfortable with it, we ask that you would contact us just to make sure we can keep their schedule accurate. We want to make sure that kids' schedules are accurate. This program will be an option for uh, parents and students to get in and make alterations to up until about mid-February. We don't have exact dates yet, at the, at, and, but we will let people know when those dates are going to be. Um, we'll communicate that through social media, email, etc. cetera. Uh, and, and at that point, then once it's locked down, you can't make changes and you would have to request for a counselor to make the changes. Uh, also wanted to let you know there's a letter going home with this information in it as well for you. So that will be looking for that in the mail soon. Okay, I wanted to talk a little bit about what it's like here at the high school, what some of the things that are similar, a lot of, there's a lot of things that are different um, for your student. So uh, we're on trimesters, that, hit, that isn't any different. The middle school's on trimesters, we're on trimesters. Here at the high school, we have a five period school day with uh, 72 minutes in each period. So those are larger, longer uh, class periods. Um, each period is worth a half of a credit. So there's three trimesters, 12 weeks each. Your student can earn two and a half credits total per trimester if they pass all their classes at the end of each year, they would have 7.5 credits. Students uh, were required to have 27.5 credits to graduate. 30 is the maximum that you would get if you passed every single class and you had 15 classes. Our board did vote. So if you have a current student that is at the high school, there, so that would be current ninth through 12th graders, their new graduation requirement is 25 credits, I believe. Oh, let me take that back. 10th, 11th, and 12th is 25 credits. 
I'm not really sure what's going to happen with the credits moving forward, but as far as I know, the 27.5 credit requirement is going to stand for your eighth and ninth graders. Just be, just be looking for that. Just know as counselors, we are going through, we're auditing them. We're making sure they have every single class they need and every single credit they need. And if they don't, we will make sure to let you know that. Okay, the Michigan Merit Curriculum. I wanted to go through a little bit, let you know what those requirements are. Your student needs to have four credits in math, four credits in English, three credits in science, three in social studies, a half in PE, a half in health, one in the visual performing arts, and online learning experience is half a credit. So that is how all of those classes break down in terms of what the state of Michigan requires for your student in order to get a diploma. Uh, one other thing that needs to be added to that is the world language. So your student is required to have two years of the same language. So in other words, you can't take one year of Spanish and one year of French, it's gotta be two full years of the same language. However, they do allow for substitutions. So but you have to take the first year. So that is required no matter what. The second year can be substituted with extra CTE programs. It can be substituted with extra visual performing art credit. We do want to point out that a lot of colleges and universities prefer seeing the actual two years of foreign language on a student schedule or world language. So, uh, we do recommend that if you are college bound, that you stay in the actual language courses for two years. Some things to think about. Um, all we have here at the high school, the opportunity a student can test out of any part of our class that we offer. And if a student is interested in testing out, thinks that they already have grasp material and could test out of the test, uh, that can be set up. We ask that that happen through our main office and that is done at the end of every trimester during exam weeks. You have to get a 77% or higher in order to be, to, be, to be considered a test out. It goes on a transfer as credit, not a grade. And then that student does not have to take that course uh, later because they've already mastered the curriculum. Um, you're, what you're going to notice with your ninth grade sc student schedule once it's all set is it's mostly core classes. There's not a ton of room in there for elective stuff. Students usually get a lot of their core stuff done in ninth grade, finish a lot of that up in 10th and by 11th and 12th, they've got lots of room in there to take extra classes, maybe elective classes that they want to take or possibly do a role if that's something that they'd like to do. Here's a sample schedule. As you can see, like I just said, it's mostly core. Um, and sometimes they'll have a couple elective classes in there. The student happens to have exploring graphics. One thing to point out is um, that, you know, just those 15 classes that you're inputting into Zello uh, will not be in that order, will not be in any typical order. They're going to be thrown into our Power School program and it's going to make a schedule for your student and it's going to be very randomly selected. Here's another sample schedule. This one is going to be more of a student who's on the honors track and you'll notice with this student that they have uh, orchestra. Um, in their schedule, and that's a three tri course, so that pretty much took up any extra uh, options they might have had for electives. Okay, so if you have questions about how many trimesters a class is, what the course descriptions are, uh, there's also a nice tool um, where your student can fill out um, what are their 15 classes? I know they've done something different in the middle school, they have the four year grid that the kids have filled out, and so. I would use that for now. Um, but if you want to know about the different scheduling resources, you can go to the counseling webpage and click scheduling resources. And then once you're there, if you click on the Mount Pleasant High School course guide, that'll get you a more in-depth description of our courses. And then below that is also the tech center course offering guide. So that will give you some more information as we progress uh, through. Only a few other things I wanted to mention um, today before I stop um, is um, I wanted to make sure that all of you um, hang on just one sec here. My slides just started going crazy. Um, I wanted to make sure to reiterate to all of you that this is a process. We're just at the very beginning that just because your student has picked classes doesn't mean that they're set in stone. We are always available through email. Um, mostly right now, that's the best way to catch us or through phone. We also want to let you know that if you want to schedule individual meetings with us, we are available to do that as well, to go through and help your student be prepared. 
And anytime that um, we can do those in person, we can also do those through do those through a Google Meet format. Um, if you uh, have a student that's online and it's not safe, or maybe it's not safe for you to be here in the school building. So please communicate with us. Let us know if there's anything that we can do to help your student transition from eighth to ninth grade. And just know that you know we're always here to help out with anything that you need. Just make sure you reach out to us and go Oilers. Thank <laughs> you.